Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at how to win ranked games and what kind of determines the victor. In this video, I'm going to kind of flip the script because I already have a high win rate. Now at the top of the screen, you'll see my win streak along with my win rate percentage. Skellige is one of the factions that I am best against. I don't really know why there's so much excitement over it. I know that Rathaz said that King Bran is very good. Um, from my deck's point of view, uh, <laughs> Skellige doesn't feel like a big threat. I know some of my teammate um, viewers have struggled with Skellige in the past. So I'm also going to kind of talk about my main strategy. I'm kind of looking to win this round as fast as possible. I know I'm up against a Queen's Guard deck, so I know that they have a lot of tempo hidden in there. I should have probably played the Smuggler, now that I think about it. I was worried about a last rate, which is one of the reasons why I went with that immediately. The Smuggler would have been much better. One of the things I recommend doing is playing more in, in the third round. Here I'm playing it early, seeing if I can bait out a Donner on Hindar, since a lot of people play that. I make the mistake of playing Teruvial now. I could have just played a Hawker support, and that would have been fine. Now I can't use the uh, Truvial's been locked, and I could have avoided that if I had just played the Hawker support. This last rate's going to be very useful, because it doesn't kill any of the Queen's Guard, and it also pulls out Illyrian. It'll allow me to pass cleanly. If I want to. I'm also kind of worried that my opponent has an Igni, because they have a really good Igni row into my... Uh, range throw, but instead they had a coral, which is to be expected. So I've already made a few mistakes. I played the Truvial too early. I didn't play the Hawker Smuggler before the Queen's Guard came out. Now my Hawker Smuggler is more of like, how should I put it? Uh, I would say my Hawker Smuggler is like just going to turn into a Scorch. There I could have possibly weakened one of his Queen's Guard. It would have been fine to do that. It wouldn't have been as much tempo, though. Decide to play my Shiru now. It blocks one of the damage done by um, Br uh, <laughs> Bruna Brand. That's her name, yeah. I put a lot of tempo in the first round. My opponent didn't, which is unfortunate. However, I'm going to be able to get card advantage because I won the coin flip. And was able to maintain a lot of point advantage on my opponent going first. My opponent already played their Scorch, so I don't have to worry about that. They've already played two of their golds, and I know one of their golds is a Queen Ceres. I already have a last rate if I want to play that, and I have a very powerful... Uh, Brian, if I want to play her, the uh, archer that does damage based on her strength. Yeah, so my opponent's already gotten a lot of points onto the board. I don't have my Hawker Smuggler anymore, so... Hmm. Okay. So he used a decoy, which I'm actually preferring that he used a decoy on that card instead of reviving more things onto the board. I was hoping I'd get another Dragoon, but I didn't. Okay. I'm actually happy about the weather. Makes it hard for my opponent to use a Geralt Igni against me. Not that I'm expecting a Geralt Igni in this deck. Okay. I want to get my brand to have as much power in my hand as possible, so I get rid of one of the Queen's Guard. Reviving that Queen's Guard isn't going to be worth much. Here, it's better that I use a Lacerate than use a Scorch, 
because I'm already going to be able to remove the uh, captain with my brand. So I'm not worried about that. So, yeah. Victory. Was fortunate that I had the dragoons buffing up my brand into the final round. That was pretty much the typical way I would play that game. Now I'm up against a croc on crate player. I'm actually really excited about this because I don't get to see very many croc on crate players, anyways. Um, I have an excellent hand as far as I'm concerned. I'm thinking I'm going to go with the dragoon opener. I'm going to flip the script here, not play the Blue Mount Commandos. I don't have a way to scorch those guys if he buffs it, because this is a self-wounding deck, I can already tell. Okay. I think that the... I was thinking that the uh, War Cry was 5 strength. That's why I played the Morin then, instead of in the final round. I'm safe to play this, because... The buff makes it immune to... Okay, I have my bamboozle set up, which is fun. But I can't really use it. So here I have an excellent shrooms, because the shrooms will not only weaken him this round, but also weaken him in the future rounds, which is great. Okay. I got an excellent last right there. I also pulls out a Lyrium. I'm ahead now. That also weakened his wounding card. So now I have another last right I can do. Arguably, I should be using Shrooms to just weaken his uh, revives in the final round. But I'm fine. I win by a lot of points. And I get all these buffs pushed into the next round. At 14 strength, Blue Mountain Commando. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to push anything out of my round hand this round, though I could have probably done that. I just didn't want to get a Blue Mountain Commando and then draw into a Saskia and have a bad draw that way. Right now, my hand is perfect for what I need it to do. Okay, I'm very happy with my hand right now, so I'm just going to keep it as is. I don't have a Saskia or a Lyrian, excuse me. All right, I played it all in the first round, meaning that my draws were easier to handle. So I get my Blue Mountain Commandos out first. Because I flipped the script, I have a lot of tempo going into this round. More tempo than I usually would have. I'm not afraid of uh, Igni this time. Because I don't have anything left in my hand, I kind of have to go with the uh, First Lights now to get out the Hawker supports. I was hoping that I would get the uh, Smuggler sooner, but I didn't. I'm actually lining them up like this so that I can get a really excellent Sheldon Skaggs. And my tempo beat my opponent getting almost the perfect board for what he was trying to accomplish that round. Now we're going to go into Radovid. Radovid's another leader I don't lose against, but I don't also face him that much. He's not very popular, because he's only really strong against a handful of decks. And he's probably weaker now than ever, because Skellige doesn't have any cards you want to lock. I'm going to open up with the Dragoons. I think it's probably a bad idea to open up with all the Dragoons. I'm going to put out the Smuggler. Why? Because my opponent's probably running, uh, yeah, the Sergeants. I'm going to put down Morin. I'm actually happy to remove that card. The reason for that is that uh, <laughs> killing it now allows me to 
it prevents him from summing it later in the game from me having 20 points above him. I just got rid of the Octopus because I know that if he has his Octopus, he has a lot more tempo on me. I know that the last rate would have been better later, but I know I can out-tempo my opponent. I'm getting a lot of value from my Dragoon right now, so I'm happy about that too. It's already been active for several turns now. Okay, he used the Margarita. The Margarita got a lot of value technically. I'm just going to keep going for deck thinning. It's unfortunate he locks these now, but I also have a safe. Um, I could have probably gone for a Bamboozle here instead of deck thinning more, but I want to have Truvial for the final my final card. If that makes sense. And I also want to get my Blue Mountain Commandos out. So I'm going to save Teruvial for the end. I usually play Teruvial in the first round. I put... I also put those all those units into the melee row so it would be immune to Ignis, the Sheldon Skaggs. Since it's only 18 points in that row. And it also makes the uh, range row really hard for my opponent to Igni. So I can pass. I won in the first round by a lot of points. I'm happy. Okay. Well, I have to kind of push it. I shouldn't have pushed Teruvial out there under some estimates, but I think I'll be fine. So I pass. I had an option just to play the Hawker support there, but I went against it. Chances are my opponent would have had to play two cards to catch up to the Hawker support. And the fewer cards that we have in the final round, the better. So I redraw Teruvial, which is to be expected. Okay, my opponent plays um, Yennefer, which I kind of expect. I'm not going to turn that into an Igni because I expect to use it on my Bran. And I expect not to have very many things to Igni. I'm going to put out Teruvial now. There's not really a way for my opponent to lock it at this point, unless he revives Margarita. Now, you might be tempted to play a Hawker support here, but I'm not brave enough to do that. I don't want to get double Igni, because if I put him down, it'll line up with the Yennefer. So now the Scorch is out, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. I can't get igni There really isn't a reason to play Zoltan Shive. Also because it might trigger a um, the Calvary to come out. I already know I'm going to win if I just pass, so that's why I passed there. Whew. We're up against another Skellige player. It's the flavor of the week right now. I'm going to play this game differently than I did the first game in this set. Because they have the War Longships. I overestimate the value of War Longships. It's unfortunate I have to deal with that. It's actually safe for me to play the Dragoon here because the chances of him removing my Dragoon with his Warlong ship is very low. So he summons a Warlong ship. That Warlong ship's high enough strength that I can scorch it. For me, that's that might seem like a, a waste, but... It will affect the way he just used a revive to get it onto the board. So I can take advantage of that. I'm going to just get rid of the other one with uh, Bran. I don't need to use my Scorch quite yet. He stole a card from my graveyard. I hate Donner. Because of the point setup, I can use my Scorch here. So I use my Bran and my Dragoons, but I still have Illyrian and um, <laughs> my Blue Mountain Commandos combo in my hand, uh, available to me. Obviously, I have to push out the Blue Mountain Commando for my hand. I'm going to just pass here. There's no reason to play out this round. He has the advantage. I did not... Oh yeah, I forgot they changed it to half the strength. So he's going to keep getting the Mark Bark. Okay. 
I haven't seen Mork Bark in a long time. Okay, I'm going to open up with my Blue Mountain Commandos. Flipping the script, playing them in the final round. Instead of the first one. I had a chance to play Blue Mountain Commando on... Uh, well, to play the Bamboozle in the second round. However, because they had that point advantage, I didn't want to go with do anything along that lines. Oh man, Donner just... He's taking all my Dragoons! <laughs> uh, it's upset me. I'm gonna play that as if it's Teruvial. I might be able to bait out a... a lock. Who knows? Still, it's still a lot of points. It's 18 points that I got there. Might have been able to play that a little earlier, but I, my opponent didn't have anything. Uh, didn't, didn't play into it. More and I want to hit things like Zigfrida. The old Geert's unfortunate because old Geert's not a card you want to play in the final round. I still have Elven Mercenary, so I take advantage of that. Shrooms is not very effective against the Captain because he has a high base strength. Since I don't have a Scorch, I can't really take advantage of all those 8 strength cards on my opponent's board, and I have a 9 strength card on my side of the board. Okay, he's a Grenus. The Grenus isn't only a 14 point silver right there. Well, a 13 point silver, actually. So my opponent forfeits. That's another King Brand game in the pocket. I love my hand right now. I have so much deck thinning through the Elven Mercenaries. It's not funny. So I'm going to open up with Dragoon. Dragoon's always a safe opener. I have a really good Scorch target there. Decide to play Morin. It's probably obvious that's Morin here. Morin's a little bit stronger in the final round. So I, this might have been a mistake to play it now. Morin stronger in the final round because it kills Peter and it kills uh, Medics, Vicovara Medics. I played it this round because I wanted to bait out an Ox if I could. Okay, here I could play Sheldon Skaggs and hope that the two cow carcasses kill each other. I'm actually upset that my. Uh, Elven Mercenaries have gotten buffed so much from the Dragoon because it messes up the or the strength values. And now the Blue Mountain Commandos are all targeted. <laughs> so I lose a 5 strength Blue Mountain Commando. It's not actually the all that bad, all things considered. Okay, he gets a pretty good value Scorch onto the board. Um... No reason to play last rate. I want to dig deeper into my deck. The more deck thinning I do, the better. Now I can't play the last Elven Mercenary because I need something to be getting buffed by the Dragoons. Decide to go for a lot of tempo here. The thing about Nilfgaard is they can't afford to lose the first round. Usually, in my estimates, because they have so many tempo producers in that round that if they do lose the round, they <laughs> kind of lose the game. So I'm just going to instant pass so that I get card advantage. I get like 0.5 card advantage because he has to go first in the final round. He steals my Dragoon. It's better than him stealing a Hawker support because the Hawker support would have been 3 strength. So I'm glad I drew Saskia because it makes my Mulligan safe. Okay. I'm happy to see the cards that I have right here. Okay. I know that I have a Shrooms that I can use. So that's why I don't mind the Emperor Brigade. I'm contemplating whether or not I want to use a Scorch or go for the double Lacerate play. 
The Devil Scorch probably would have been better. All things considered, because now I'm like, oh no, I had such a perfect Scorch that I could have done. <laughs> so many points to be removed. Can't win them all. So I do the Shroom play. Now I don't have something in my hand to get buffed by the Dragoon, which is unfortunate. But I wanted to move all the, his units to the Siege Row. And arguably, it would have been better to have moved the Elven Mercenary instead of... It would have been more points had I removed the Elven Mercenary instead of the uh, Nausicaa Brigade. Because the Nausicaa Brigade only had one strength. It wasn't that big impact. I'm happy to draw another card like this. So I see a better opportunity than last right. So I gotta go with the Pulling Out Brand for 14 point swing. Now my opponent forfeits because they know that I have a card in my hand worth more than what he has on the board, and I win. His mill garden wasn't successful because this deck runs more than 25 cards. Having a lot of bronze units to pull. And I went through my entire deck, pretty much. So I'm actually happy about that. Okay, I see this Dragoon and I'm worried about it. So I decided I'm going to remove both of them. I'm kind of overreacting. But I'm actually happy he played the uh, Yarpen. So now both the Dragoons are gone. And his Yarpen takes three strength. So that's a bonus. Okay. Now I have to say something. I almost always lose against Dwarf. So this is kind of like my final box. This is the game right before I could possibly rank up. There's a psychological aspect of me continuously pulling um, Dragoons onto the board because it means my opponent has to decide whether or not he wants to continue this round because I'm way ahead of him in tempo. My Dragoons didn't get me very much value, but I can just pass here. <laughs> and be successful there. I have Bran in my hand and I still have one more Dragoon in my deck. I kind of regret playing the Elven Mercenary there. So since my opponent played that, I'm worried that he's going to remove my my Dragoon. So I get it buffed like this. I figure that Morin's less valuable than the... Hawker support, because the Hawker support represents 12 points of value due to its buff onto Bran. Where Morin's probably just going to be 5 points. Since he's buffed off all his dwarfs multiple times. So. Okay. Now, because I moved his units around... He doesn't have three units on a row. So he can't really get a really good... Um, Thunderbolt potion off. Not that it would have mattered, because my brand was so strong. <laughs> and I rank up. I'm not ranked 19, I'm ranked 18, don't worry. Thanks for watching, this is my deck statistics. So I went 10 games without a loss. Most of my wins were against Skellige, because Skellige was the most popular in this. All of the games you saw here were consecutive. The three games that happened immediately before this were in my previous video about rank 17 being casual mode. The loss I have for my previous rank, uh, when I was climbing up from rank 16 to 17, and that was against Dwarf Skoyatel, my arch nemesis. Quick question, why do you guys think I win these games? I don't, I don't really consider myself that good of a player. Is my deck just amazing? I don't know. Well, everybody have a good day.